Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome aboard the Los Madagascar Express. Get the tracker things off so while the train's moving. We remain seated at all times. Keep arms and legs inside the carriages. Don't get to put your face in it as well. There we are running non-stop train trips at the moment. Uh, we're not stopping within the Lima enclosure at this time of the year, but we've got a few other animals to have a look at on the way around. Sit <laughs> back, relax, enjoy the ride, we'll go see what else we can find. And as we come out of the station... <laughs> get Nanny. She has to get us over nice and warm. Get Grandad. No, Grandad. Get Choo Choo. So here we go. One, two, three. Choo Choo Choo. Lovely! Our coach just isn't, it is currently home to around about 200 species of animal. Everything from the smallest bugs, grubs and insects, all the way up to the largest lions, tigers, elephants, rhinos, bears and giraffes. And somewhere in the middle of all of those, we have our European great wolves. And that's what we're going to see first up on the right hand side as we come around the next corner. And we have three wolves in the enclosure, they are called Torby, Tala and Asta. They're sisters just over five and a half years old. And when you get to see our wolves, you may notice they're not exactly grey. In the wild, they're very really neat, from the near white all the way the boots are completely black. And you can see that kind of variation in their fur. So the name grey wolf is a little misleading. That's the wolves. I for eating, it's got some meat. I'm going to have a Now our three wolves are looking nice and big and bulky at the moment. And that's because they're carrying around all of their winter fur. And they've grown that over the last couple of months. Nanny. And that's going to keep them toasty, warm and dry through the winter. <laughs> they don't necessarily need it too much in this country. But out in the wild, some of the areas they live, they have to tolerate temperatures down to about minus 25 or 30 degrees. So those fur coats really do a fabulous job for them. Now the European grey wolf is just one species. There are many others all over the world. A few thousand years ago, someone first domesticated the wolf. Through selective breeding over the many centuries, we've been able to change the size, the shape, the coloration, and the temperament of the wolf so that we can bring them into our homes as our pet dogs. So if you've got a dog at home, regardless of what breed it is, whether it's a pug, poodle, great dame, St. Bernard, or everything in between, you can be certain that it is actually related to the wolf. Now we all know that wolves like to howl at the moon. I want to find out if we've got any howlers on board. So after three, let's give it a go. Are we ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Wonderful. Now our wolves certainly heard you. They do have the most amazing hearing. So I guess you're all now honorary members of the Colchester Zoo wolf pack. Over the left hand side, we have our black and white rough lemurs. <laughs> Just to come outside and running towards the far end of the enclosure at the moment, so keep your eyes open. We do have two in here, Edmay and Tanjola, male and female. Well, I'll tell you a little bit more about those on the way back down to the station. And then just as we're coming up under the walkway, what we need to be doing is looking up and to the right hand side. What we're looking for is an animal known as a binturong. Now the binturong is an unusual animal. They look like a cross between a bear and a cat. They're a big ball of black tail, about the size of a large dog and spend about 95% of their day hiding away up in a tree, very rarely coming down to the ground. They eat pretty much anything they can get their paws on, and their wee smells like popcorn. Now we do have two things oh, in the enclosure. They are Teddy and Cecilka, male and a female. And if you look right towards the very back of the enclosure, just by the doorway at the top, you can just about see one. Now also in that enclosure, scurrying around on the floor somewhere, we have our Asian short clawed otters. Nice little family group of seven. I've got the parents, Rabbi and Summer, and then five cubs. Rosie, Sally, Sprout, Rupert and Robin. They are the world's smallest otter species. Fully grown, they are um, around about 18 inches in length from nose to tail. And then just as we carry on around, over on the right hand side in the big open enclosure, we have our troop of gelada baboons. So they're kind of all the way along the back wall at the moment. Gelada baboon are the last grazing primate left on the planet. You'll find them up in the mountains of Ethiopia, normally in large groups between three and four hundred. Now the biggest and hairiest, enjoying the sun underneath the first window, his name's a Kobo. He's round about eight years old and he's been here with us for a couple of years. And when he first arrived, many of the females in the enclosure got a little bit excited and quite literally threw themselves at him. He's probably had the best couple of years of his life since he's been here. And as a result, we do have six youngsters. Now we have those just over a year and a half old. 
two, just over a year old, and our newest arrival was born in June of last year. The enclosure on the left hand side is home to our uh, little family group of ringtail lemurs. And this is much fun. open today, it's a little bit chill. Now we're going to see more animals after this. Now you know that big slide, I cannot go on it after this. I like big sliding. Now the lemurs are only found on the island of Madagascar, they're not found anywhere else in the world. No, there's no. 11 different no. species of them out there. Yeah, All of them are endangered. 105 of that number are considered no. critically endangered. That includes our black and white red lemurs. You can now see a little bit clearer as we come back down. We've got one on the floor, right down the bottom corner here, and then the one on the floor is Tanjona, he's our male, and then Adelaide, our female, she's sitting in the doorway. Really? Now these particular lemurs are primarily vegetarian, eating fruit, seeds and berries, but they're also very fond of nectar as part of their diet. As they feed on that nectar, they feed within flowers, they collect pollen on that fur, and they pass that pollen from flower to flower, much in the same way that bees and insects do, pollinating them as they go. And because of their body size, they are considered to be the world's largest pollinator of plants. <laughs> now we, all, we normally have our chili and flamingos out on the lake as well. They're not there at the moment, they're currently safely tucked away indoors. Now we do have some ongoing bird flu restrictions within the area. So understandably, the people want to keep an eye on them. We do have 30 birds, males and females, as you would imagine, so we are hoping it's a row. Now, flamingos, they are not pink, they are completely grey. And they stay grey until they're about two years old. They get that pink coloration from a chemical substance called the which is found in fruits and crustaceans that they eat in the wild. Now, we don't have any of that in our water, so we have to add to their food as part of their diet. Otherwise, the birds would just be a whitish grey colour and not that fabulous pink. In Marilima, the Colchester Zoo runs a charity called Action for the Wild. It's been running for just over 25 years. And over that time, we have raised and donated many thousands of pounds for worthy causes of projects and organisations around the world, all with the conservation and animal welfare at their forefront. It also allowed us to establish the Orthopathic Nature Reserve in South Africa. 14,000 acres of unused farmland that have been working very hard to turn back to natural habitat. Currently, there's somewhere between five and 600 different species. Now, if you'd like more information, 